In this episode, we'll walk through the process of replacing the foam in a teddy bear mattress in my 2020 Keystone Bullet 243 BHS. The lower bunk in my Keystone Bullet had significant use over the past several years, and the original foam in the mattress had deteriorated and needed replacement. We again opted to use foam from the foam factory to create a much better sleeping experience. By the end of the video, you should know if this task is something you would want to tackle yourself or not. Hi everybody, I'm John Marucci. I'm an avid traveler and teacher and love to explore. In 2016, I decided to travel by RV and have never looked back. I've had my share of problems along the way, and being a teacher by nature, I've tried to turn these problems into help for others. Whether new to RV travel or experienced, you're in the right place. So let's jump in. Sleeping in an RV can be tough, especially when sleeping on an original equipment mattress for longer outings. While the teddy bear mattress seems well made, with lots of use, it will need to be replaced at some point. When it is time, your choice is to buy a brand new or replace and upgrade the foam. With another new teddy bear mattress, you'll still have the same quality foam that will perform similarly. With a high quality foam replacement, you get a better foam and thus better performance. The trade-off is the time and skills needed to do the foam replacement. Here's the skills and tools required. An electric knife, a seam ripper, scissors, a large needle, upholstery thread, and basic sewing skills. As a heads up, this project involves a lot of sewing, so if you lack the confidence to sew seams back together, make sure you find someone who can do it or opt for buying a new mattress. Also, the process can be a bit dangerous in terms of cuts from the seam ripper, sewing needle, scissors, or electric knife. So please be aware of the difficulty before engaging in this project. Also, by replacing the original foam, you are removing the flammability rating of the mattress as shown on the mattress tag. With that said, let's get into the process. Part one is to measure the teddy bear mattress and order the new foam. First, measure the existing mattress accurately. Most teddy bear mattresses used in RV bunkhouse models have an angle cut. Before ordering, you need to measure your mattress's width, length, and depth, ignoring the angle cut. The dimensions of the mattress in my 2020 Keystone Bullet are 74 inches long, by 51 inches wide, by 3.5 inches deep. You can also find the mattress's dimensions on the tag on the back cover. We'll cover the angle cut later. Next, order the replacement foam. With the accurate dimensions in hand, go to the Foam Factory website using the link in the description. Please note that I have no affiliation with the Foam Factory and recommend them only because I have used them several times in the past with excellent results and quality service. I've always purchased the Firm Lux Foam from the Foam Factory to redo dinette cushions. The Foam Factory does not recommend Lux Foam for bedding so in this case, I ordered the next level down in terms of firmness, the high density HD36 high quality foam. In my case, I ordered the size on my label, 74 inches by 51 inches by three and a half inches, except I only ordered it in three inch thickness. This proved to be a good move. To level set expectations, my order took about a week to arrive, but I'm in Michigan and so is the foam factory. The order will come vacuum sealed, so be aware and do not open the seal until you're ready to install the new foam. As we'll show, the foam will expand quickly once the vacuum seal is broken. Part two is to remove the existing foam from the teddy bear mattress. Find a location where you can lay out the entire mattress. The mattress can quickly become difficult to maneuver as you progress through this process, so make sure you do not have breakables nearby. As I work to install the new foam, you will see that it was a difficult procedure 
that required constantly moving the mattress. Next, remove the stitching on the bottom seam of the mattress. Using your seam ripper, begin removing the stitching along the back seam of the mattress. I should preface this by reiterating that this procedure requires basic sewing skills, so if you cannot re-sew the seam, don't rip the seam. The seams are not too difficult to remove, and with them, the outer cording should come off as well. Let's let this clip roll for a bit to see the details. Next, remove the existing mattress. Once the seam and cording are removed, you should be able to reach into the mattress cover and fold the existing mattress in order to remove it from the mattress cover. This isn't the easiest thing to do solo, so if you have a helper, this is an excellent time to ask them for help. You'll need to fold and pull the existing foam out of the mattress cover. If you do have a helper, have them hold the mattress cover while you fold and pull the foam out. You can learn from my mistake here as I didn't want to remove all the back stitching. I thought I could fold and remove the mattress foam with only about two thirds of the seam removed. What happened was the foam was challenging to handle and some of the mattress cover ripped. It would have been better to remove all the back stitching before removing the mattress foam. It took extra time later to fix the torn cover. Part three is to trace the dimensions onto the new foam and cut the new foam to size. Open the new foam. Open and lay out the new foam flat, remembering that the new foam is vacuum sealed. It will expand rapidly, so ensure you have plenty of space for the foam to expand. Here you can watch me remove the plastic that breaks the new foam's vacuum seal. Ignore the blue foam in the picture, as we also purchased a small piece of Lux foam for a dinette cushion back. Next, place the old mattress foam on the new foam to trace the form. Put the original mattress foam on top of the new piece of foam. Line up the old foam and new foam along the long sides. As you'll notice, although I purchased a piece with the 51 inch width, according to the mattress tag, only a 50 inch width was needed. The 74 inch length was about right. This would mean trimming the 51 inch width on the angled side by an inch. It would have been much easier to have purchased a 50 inch wide piece. Take a look as we walk the camera around the old piece of foam lying on the new foam. In hindsight, it might have been better not to rely on the tag, but to first have removed the old foam and measure it prior to ordering the new foam. Next, trace the outline of the old foam onto the new foam. Using a Sharpie or a good magic marker, trace the shape of the old foam onto the new foam. Take your time and tackle the angle side first then the rest of the side of the foam. Try to keep the Sharpie or magic marker at the same angle to the foam throughout the entire trace. Next, raise the new foam for cutting. It's important to raise the new foam before cutting. This means placing something under the new foam while cutting it. I used the old mattress foam as the primary support and added some other foam pieces to raise the new foam off the ground. The purpose is to use the electric knife without hindrance or hitting the floor. Next, cut down the new foam to the exact dimensions. Use the electric knife and cut the new foam along the trace lines drawn onto the new foam. Here, we are cutting the angled piece. It is crucial that you hold the electric knife perpendicular to the surface of the new foam and cut slowly. Otherwise, the cut will become angled. Cut slowly and keep the electric knife's cord out of your cutting path. By the way, a utility knife makes this a difficult task. The best way to go I know of 
is to invest in a good electric knife. Please see our Amazon store for a recommended product. I try to keep my head and eyes directly over the electric knife as I move along so I can see precisely where the blades are in reference to the trace line. Notice as I go along, my left hand is holding the discarded foam piece up from the floor and away from the knife. You'll also notice that my cut isn't perfect, but is close to the line. This worked fine when we fit the new foam. Cutting the longer straight piece was a bit more difficult. And as mentioned earlier, it could have been avoided if I had ordered the foam an inch narrower. You'll first want to recheck that you have proper support for the new foam and clearance for the travel of the electric knife for the entire length of the cut. Let's let this clip play out and as it does, notice the position of the foam, the cord of the electric knife that needs to move as I cut, and what my left hand is doing during the cut. Before we complete the rest of the process, please consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell icon to set reminders when new video content is published. Data shows that almost 90% of those who view our videos are not subscribed. Doing this will help the YouTube algorithm serve this video to more people like you. Thanks. Part four is to install the new foam into the mattress cover. Lay out the mattress cover and position the new foam. Lay out the cover with the open seam toward you. You'll notice that since we ripped the fabric, we opened the bottom seam the rest of the way to make it easier to insert the new foam. Next, insert the new foam into the mattress cover. Take hold of the new foam and insert it into the mattress cover. If you have a helper, this is a great time to get assistance as it was challenging for one person. Let's let this clip play out for a bit and you'll see my struggle. I include this so you'll understand the physical effort involved. There isn't an easy way to insert the foam having had to remove it from its shipping seal and cut it first. Notice how the new foam gets caught on the inside of the fabric cover. It was difficult to do alone while holding the foam folded in half. Eventually, I do get the foam inside the cover. My strong counsel is to have someone help feed the cover over the new foam while you hold the folded foam. I suppose there might be a way to remove air from the cut foam prior to insertion, but we didn't pursue this alternative. If you have better ideas, please leave them in the comments. Next, maneuver the foam within the mattress to ensure proper fit. Use your hands to reach in and position the foam into the corners of the mattress cover. Be careful not to rip the mattress cover fabric. This requires some strength and reach to accomplish. Let's let the clip run to show the effort involved. To say this was no fun is an understatement and getting the new foam to unfold properly within the mattress cover took a lot of persistence. The concern is not getting hurried or frustrated with the physical process. It would have been easy to rip the material at any stage, and looking back, I would never have done this alone other than the need to videotape the process. It took several minutes of hard work to get the new foam flat into the mattress cover and several more minutes to align the cover. Yet with persistence, I was able to get the new foam in without ripping the mattress cover. At one point, I stood the mattress up to try and get the foam to align better to the cover, which worked well. From there, it was the tedious work of shaking the fabric to get the foam into the right places. It ended up fitting well, and as you can see, the 51 inch width would have been too wide for the cover. Overall, it fit very well after the wrestling match of properly positioning the foam. Part five is to sew up the bottom seam of the mattress cover. Pin the length of the open seam. Fold the open seam fabric together and insert a straight pin about every three to four inches. This will hold the material together as you sew the seam. Ensure the straight pin goes through both pieces of the thick seam fabric and feed it back through again. Be careful with the straight pin as you can get poked easily. 
FYI, we did remove the mattress tag as its information about the flammability of materials no longer applied. Please understand that the new foam does not carry the same flammability standards. Here is a view of the bottom seam fully pinned prior to sewing. Next, sew the seam with a large sewing needle and upholstery thread. Using needle and thread, sew the seam material together. This is done using a basic sewing pattern and will take considerable time to complete the entire length of the seam. Let's let this clip play out to see how we did this. After sewing the seam, remove the straight pins from the fabric. Next, sew the cording onto the seam. First, place the cording on the newly sewn seam and add straight pins every two to three inches to keep the cording in place. Let's let it play out for a moment so you can see the process. Here's the cording fully pinned to the seam, ready to be sewn up. Next, sew the cording onto the seam using the pattern above. Again, let's let the clip run so you can see the process. This is a long process that requires accuracy and patience to complete. Here we see the seam with the cording just about fully sewn. We needed to deal with a bit of overlapping cording to finalize the project. Let's take a look. We could have cut the cord short, but decide to sew it on top of the existing cording. It was a bit difficult because now we were going through two layers of cording and the dual overlapping fabric. Overall, it worked well, felt strong, and looked good. The final product looks pretty good and feels much better than the old one. Hopefully this process helped you see the effort, tools, and skills needed to do this upgrade. We'll be testing the new mattress out shortly and we'll likely report back with an update. Laying on the new foam after we installed it was much nicer than the old used foam. We'll see how it holds up over time. It was a time-consuming yet inexpensive upgrade worth considering. That'll do it for this step-by-step -step process of replacing your teddy bear mattress foam. Hopefully this video will help you tackle this task more confidently. Remember that the process document for this task is on johnmarucci.com in the resources area. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button, share it with friends on social media, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. This is John Marucci and so long for now.